Oh, I love that. Uh, the fast X particles and signal is uh, is the, ooh, this is pretty too. Let's tackle that. From the same artist actually, and I like this one a little bit better just as a demo. Uh, this is hood ass, and it could be, could be that, could also be not how you pronounce it. I'm gonna go with Hodas. Look it, it's one O. So you got Hodas. Philip, Philip, Philip. Ooh, I've seen his stuff. I was I was uh, playing around with some of his uh, lighting and just kind of practicing with it. He's got some really pretty stuff. Please go check uh, this out in Instagram. It's also on Behance. Some really really pretty stuff. Uh, Philip. Uh, thanks for making pretty stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and start start to tackle something like this because I think this would be pretty fun. Um, what we have here, it looks like uh, almost like a, a spiral. So it's got a, a bunch of kind of swept around things. And there's a couple ways to approach this. I'm going to actually do it uh, in a pretty fun way that uh, Chris showed me a while back. Um, uh, we could do it that way. We could also do it. It'd be more stable, I think, with just traditional um, helix, but we can, we can practice a bunch of stuff. Let's go experiment. Any other questions before we dive into this one? Uh, we got this one as well, this Behance here project, and it's talking about the infinity symbol. That's very cool. Um, that turns into more particles and stuff like that. I think we might be able to tackle that. Um, I think for Today, it might be a little bit quicker to do something like that. Finally got Signal Hollister Group. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Um, is that Daniel? If it is, thank you. If it's not, thank you still. Appreciate that. Uh, looks festive. Found the link. Uh, let's see here. Can you tell the difference between luminance strength and the strength and illumination tab and GI renders? Yeah, so uh, Pro Tools. With reflectance, you have to use real luminance. It doesn't work with that GI renders. So if you're not using GI, it doesn't work at all. So I've been using it standard. Um, but if you just need a little hot kick on from GI, you could use that. It's really a little bit of each. I don't see a reason not to use one, except for I wasn't using global illumination, so I can't use it. Dan, what's up? Good to see you. Finally got signal. Was that signal? Yes. Signal, I tell you. It's a sleeper hit. It's a sleeper hit. Let me show you why. Let me show you why, because you, it's something you got to demo because it's not a still render thing. It's an animation thing. It's hard to show. And um, here, here's actually one of the ways we could build that spiral. So let's just go ahead and build that. And I'm going to grab this and a matrix object, um, matrix, scale that down. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to take this null in the center and make it the parent and put the matrix object in it. Okay. Now with the matrix object selected, I'm going to shift C. I'm going to say tracer. Okay. Now if I hit play, I think this will work live. If I hit play to go to rotation and move this around, I get traced objects, right? Pretty cool. So it's tracing our, our, our actual uh, matrix object, moving it around. So now how do we do that constantly? Well, this is where you could use something like signal and say, hey, I want you to spin constantly. And in this case, we could say, just use a regular base channel. And I want you to go 360 degrees, right? You have to tell it what you want to do. So in this case, I want it to be on H, it looks like, boom. I want you to go 360 degrees over the course of 72 frames. So now, whoop, we got one spin for 72 frames, not bad. Now, what happens if we go to 200 frames? Well, if we want this to keep going, we could do something like uh, additive mode. So now what this does is it goes around and stops and then keeps going, right? It'll go on forever because it's just adding 360, next one 720, and it just keeps going. In fact, you can look at the numbers. You can look at the output and see final output. Look at 720. Then it keeps going again. Um, so this is cool, but let's say we want this to be um, linear. We can go back into our signal tag and select our points, right-click on them, and use any of these spline presets. We have linear here, so that's great. Now what we can, can we do? Well. This is all very linear. These are like little grids here, but we could also take this and randomize it. 
because we're using a matrix object that works very similar to a cloner object if you ever use matrix. Um, what's cool about matrix is it doesn't render anything. It's just blank. So it's almost kind of like a particle uh, in a way. So now what we could do is go to our matrix object and say, I want to randomize our matrix object and it will do that. Now we have random little circles here. Now, if we want to animate that over time, we could either use signal or we can just use the random uh, uh, noise. And then we could um, you do index, which means they all move individually. And that is just way too fast. I just want like 10%, right? 10% speed and uh, even maybe even less here. I think noise is going to be a global noise. So that might be uh, uh, fighting us a little bit. So if we go to noise, it's global noise. We want this to be UV based and then we want to just, there we go. Hopefully that is moving just a little bit. Awesome. So now it's just not perfect as it comes around and we can move in and out a little bit more if we want. Maybe we go in and I'm trying to think this way. There we go. So now we get some that are crazy out of the box there. And now we're doing that. So now this is all how I'm trying to build this right so we get enough little spins here now we can take our tracer and sweep that dude sweep it with what to me looks kind of like it's a either a cogwheel or a flower or something like that so i'm gonna put the flower in the sweep i'm gonna put the tracer in the sweep i'm gonna say sweep the flower on the tracer I always get this backwards, but there it is. Did it. And then I go back to frame zero, screw it all up. Oh, that flower is a, li a little bit, a little bit too big. Let's shrink it down. Okay, let's turn that, let's turn that off. Let it trace. Okay, different every time. Now let's add our flower. Okay. Now we're talking and now we just need a little variation. I think it gets thicker and thinner. So we can come into our sweep and say, yo, sweep details, scale, keep it high in the middle. And at the ends, I want you to point it, make it a little bit pointy. Okay. So that's going to give us a little bit more variation, right? Maybe that's too much. Okay. So we could go to our um, randomizer and say, not that much. Keep it, keep it a little, you know, keep it cool. Okay. So just to speed it up again, I'm going to wind, I'm going to fling through here, get a little variation going on and stop it. Turn on the flower. See what we got. Now, is it, is it tracing? Is it getting, um, the scale from that sweep? Let's find out. We could also do rotation as well. That's one way to check and see if it's working. So we get a little bit of rotation there. That's good. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Uh, so now we're going to take um, the sweep and we're going to uh, angle it a little bit. I think that's probably a good idea. Can we angle it without moving it? We didn't need to render it, but what we can do is aha, twist it. And I'm going to also try to do like keep, well, maybe we shrink this down a little bit as well. Outer radius, down in. Did anybody feel a breeze? Uh, so then there's eight. I'm just getting a little bit more detail on this piece, just so it's there. Okay, so now we have. Um, uh, well, I gotta make sure there's no comments. You know, there's nothing happen. <laughs> my life everyone uh let's let's uh keep that as is i think what i can actually do is set this to say make object or whatever they call that um current state to object there it is so let me turn that off and now this this whole piece now is geometry okay this is important because now i i, I can rewind i could i could do anything now I want. And this is just geometry. It's made, it's done. And I think it looks close enough. So I'm going to keep it. So that'll be my geometry. And we can start to build out the rest of the scene, which if I go back is right here. So that's that piece there. 
You got some spheres, you got some um, little pieces there. Let's go ahead and grab a sphere for the middle. Let's start to set up our scene. Let's go ahead and grab uh, some uh, luminant. Um, in this case, let's call them circles. Or actually, for these, we could just use actual, actual torus swip. Okay, and these are luminant, so we could start to also texture things. You don't have to do things in order, but we could just start to set some of these things up. This torus is also, you know, more like this. It's probably a little bit more rounded. And you can see there's one there, you know, we could start to place these things and start to build the rest. So from here, let's uh, just assume you can know, you know how to do the rest. You got the glass uh, cylinders there, or the glass uh, spheres. Let's go ahead and set up, sorry, a little allergies here today. Let's go ahead and set up our studio. Now, before we get into studio land, we need to look at our lighting and say, what, how is this made? How, um, what's the textures? Where is the lighting coming from? Where are my shadows? Now, as always, we're gonna look at our shadows and our reflections to decide where our lighting is. On this case, it looks like, I'm pointing at the screen, it looks like here and here are our main reflections, which means there's probably a light right here. And we also decide that because there's a big uh, shape under to the right of this. So the light's probably up over here. Now there's also something going on over here because we have some reflections here. And so it looks like we have two main lights, at least to start with. We also have a little bit of color on these lights, or you know, maybe the background's tinted a little bit. But let's first of all grab a psych, psych studio. Because we like this angle, let's just rotate around. No, no biggie. Let's scale this all up. And let's start to grab our camera. So we could grab a camera and do something that's a little bit more zoomed in. I think will feel a little bit better. Uh, and that is that. Okay, now let's also create a new uh, material for our sweep, which is right there. And um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and add some lights. So in this case, I'm gonna use two soft boxes. Let's go one and two. Okay, one is almost exactly where it needs to be. I'm gonna move my camera and it's roughly around there, although I think it's more like here. And it might be out a little bit further. Uh, it's definitely a lot larger. So I'm gonna scale that up and I'm gonna go a little bit of distance. The other one I think is over here, okay? And that's again, from our reflections and all that stuff. And this one might be smaller, it might be closer. Um, and that is that. So I'm gonna tint these just a little bit, mostly to see where they're, where they're uh, coming from. So we could kind of angle the, the color a little bit. And uh, I've said this a lot of times, it's always good to add a little bit of color in your lights anyway. Uh, and so now, Let's get a rough idea where we are. Um, this is where we should probably open up top coat, talk about texturing these things and turning it into something a little bit better. Um, let's save it. And uh, let's not forget uh, -O -D -S -S. Uh, scene one, boom. Okay, so you can see it's taken a little bit uh, to render. We're not using any fancy render presets or anything. Um, the standard stuff, especially when you start messing with reflectance and all that, can take quite a long time. Um, but here it comes, there it goes. Let's see how long this takes. But you can see that took a while. Uh, if you simply add some render settings, and let's just for now go light kit draft since we're using light kit you'll see those settings pop up much, much faster. It's gonna have to calculate all this little detail here on this thing, but once it's done, you're in. What do we have to do? We have to select both of our textures, go into our illumination, turn on GI area light, and that will help us quite a bit. We do have a lot of geometry here, so it could take a little bit longer to set up and all that. But let's also take our second softbox, turn down the brightness, and really talk about just the one over there. There we go. Uh, actually, this might be the blue one. This is full brightness. This is the one we toned down. So now let's look at our textures, figure out what we need. We need a kind of matte, scratched up, chrome kind of sphere. Uh, so, and oh, also, duh, we could look at the sphere itself and realize what our lighting is, which looks like it's more overhead than it is, um, uh, than it is 
over to the left as much, uh, but it looks like there's a little bit of both. So it looks like uh, we have some overhead and then some left and then some right. There is a little narrow one as well. So let's add our overhead softbox. And this one uh, we do need to turn off. Let's move out. Let's rotate to keep the uh, uh, reflections kind of similar. And in this case, let's just line it up and get this a little bit wider. So we could just scale that up. But then we could shrink one down. Okay, so now we got our overhead. We got our left, which I think needs to come a little bit more around the front. Just angle it. Swoop. Okay. Okay. Now we're now we're going. So we got all our geometry. We got all this stuff happening. Let's see what we got. Now we need some textures. Let's go ahead and create. Uh, looks like we have a few textures I put on here already. We have our glow. Uh, Taurus and uh, let's make sure that that has GI area light on as well uh, this does I should say I'm remembering that comment now they were talking about the generate GI this does not work with reflectance but this does GI area light actually does calculate um, so let's make a kind of gold battered you know copper kind of look for this we could do that by um, going to our sweep texture Let's double click on it to bring it in top coat. Let's start with some uh, chrome. Let's go into our metals and pick copper. That will add it, uh, add copper to our chrome. Let me make sure that's working. I didn't get a little refresh. There it is. And I'm gonna turn off our color channel and I'm gonna go to bump and I'm gonna add dirt to that. Now that's gonna roughen that uh, texture up quite a bit. Um, and so you can see we have a lot of geometry here, but it will eventually kind of get there. I'm going to turn down our bump depth quite a bit, just so it's a little bit. It's just blurry. It's just dented and blurry. So what we're looking for are those little shiny bits up in the upper uh, part of the corner. That's looking a little bit better. Okay, so let's let's start there for now. Let's move our studio down a little bit. Just give it a little bit more shadow, a little bit more room to to breathe and let's also grab our uh, let's just create a new material by unclicking everything we can come into top coat click chrome this is going to be our sphere okay now our sphere uh, if we just turn off our sweep is going to be a little bit blurry so I could turn up our settings a little bit for this one it's going to be a little bit blurry okay and it's going to have some imperfections so let's go ahead and click imperfections and now that's going to add some scratches and stuff to it. That might even be too much. Let's go to Imperfections 4. Good. And let's add even more blur. And maybe we're pretty close with that one. Maybe our overall reflections get toned down quite a bit. A little bit more blurry. Okay. Let's see how all that comes together. Um, we have our sweep. We have all the detail in this. And it's about that time when we have to start to turn up our render settings and start to do some renders. Now, I'm not going to go too high. I'm just going to go light kit low. That's going to at least let us calculate, which remember, we do have a lot of geometry. I probably could have toned down the geometry before I baked it. Uh, that would have helped with our render time as well. But I, I didn't think about that. I just let it do its own thing. So it's actually going to calculate quite a lot. It's going to send a lot of data over to the Mac Mini as well. Uh, but that just gives us more time, you know. Just gives us more time to chat. Um, so we uh, Q and A, awesome, awesome. Omas, yep, this ain't live. <laughs> it's live, I promise. I just, I'm, I, that's what I'm doing. I'm re pre-recording and then firing up Twitch and then playing back my stuff. Uh, that's funny. Um, that's funny. Cool, cool. All right, X particles tutorial. Okay, awesome. So it looks like, uh, you know, I think we're close. Um, I think our settings need quite a lot uh, going on. I would also take this Taurus and maybe just put this in a ba -da -ba cloner. And um, let's go ahead and turn off our sweep just for a second to set this up. And we can actually, you know, this actually looks kind of interesting. There you go, there's a little cloner. Uh, we can set up uh, a linear cloner here, maybe a few of these. Maybe they don't move a lot, but then we add a random effector that does move them a lot. So now they're 
kind of moving all around. Swoop. Just to make this a little bit kind of different, we can also grab our cloner, move it up. Let's also adjust our, in our random effector, adjust scale. So they're different. And rotation. Swip that. Cool. Okay. So that's that. Let's go back to our sweep. Let's turn that on. Let's go to our render settings. Let's do a save and let's go to like hit medium now and compare the difference. Now this rendered after calculating all that geometry, of course, in 34 seconds. Um, this one, the preparation time should be the same. Um, and then the render time should take a little bit longer because we're just cranking up the samples. So, uh, Professor RGB, nice render. Uh, give give um, give a uh, a uh, uh, Hodas the uh, the high fives. He he comes up with this stuff. I'm just trying to backwards engineer this, trying to figure it out. So you know, I I, I see light and color and try to backwards engineer things. That's that's what I do. You know, look at look at the shadows, look at the reflections, try to figure out how it happens, and then and then render it out. So it looks like we're actually pretty close on this. Um. If I uh, had more time, I would go back and re recalculate this with way less uh, geometry. That is for sure. I'm also going to make sure that the, this is not um, intersecting with our sphere. I think that looks a little bit, a little bit weird. Um, so I could just move this up. I think that might do something. And then I could take the random effector and move it. Let's say, let's say this way. There we go. Move that so it's not touching. No touching. Let's go with that. So now we got little reflections as well. And let's, for the last one, while we talk about our next render, let's go to light kit high. Actually, I may need to take off here pretty soon. So let's get some final questions wrapped up and uh, get rolling. Unless we find a fast one, black text.